and our um, final presentation before lunch, um, we'll be hearing from Shirin Zimri, who is Vice President of R&D at Neurosense, um, who will be describing a biomarker-driven approach for studying ALS therapy activity. Welcome. Thank you, and I hope that you can see my screen, and if not, please yes. shout out. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, thanks. So hello, everyone, and it's a, a great pleasure to be here and to present key elements of our work at Nurse and Therapeutics. But firstly, I would really like to take this opportunity and to thank Jen and all the organizers for such an outstanding conference, as always. Thank you so much. Um, so these are our forward-looking statements. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, good. Thanks. So the pathophysiology of ALS, as we all know, is very complex, and it's underlying multiple pathways and mechanisms that are involved. And therefore, we believe that a combination therapy and its ability to tackle multiple fronts holds much promise. The advantage of using combination therapy actually addresses two aspects. So the first would be to enhance the synergistic effect of a drug, and the second is to improve the pharmacokinetics of it. With Prime C, we aim to tackle these two strategies. So, <clears throat> sorry, Prime C is a unique extended release formulation uh, ex uh, consisting of two FDA approved drugs, ciprofloxacin and salcaxid, that aim to work together synergistically on more than one ALS target, in which each one of the compounds targets several of these key pathologies. But importantly, the unique extended release formulation of Prime C allows us to maximize the synergism between these two compounds. So, in order to assess the improvement in the pharmacokinetics, we performed uh, a rodent study in which we administered uh, the um, mice either with uh, the uh, Prime C combination, which is ciprofloxacin and salcaxib, or with ciprofloxacin alone and measure the levels of ciprofloxacin in the brain utilizing LCMSMS. And as you can see, when we uh, um, um, addressed and, and treated the, the, animals, the animals with uh, the two components together, we see higher levels of ciprofloxacin in the brain and for a longer period of time, presumably because of the fact that this combination increase the drug resistance by blocking the pump responsible for the efflux of ciprofloxacin and thereby allowing the levels of ciprofloxacin to remain elevated and for a longer period of time. When addressing the, uh, the uh, mode of action of the drug and the ability of prime C uh, combination to improve the mode of action, uh, we performed a collaborative study together with Dr. Justin Ikeda from USC using ALS IPSC's uh, model. Uh, and as you can see, when we uh, treat um, IPSCs from ALS patients with either each one of the compounds alone and the combination, comparing them, of course, to a vehicle, what we can see is that the combination resulted in a better survival rate relative to each one of the compounds alone and, of course, to the control render its levels to be similar to the uh, healthy controls. The ability of Prime C to affect, uh, uh, um, uh, to show beneficial effect and to show its synergistic mode of action was also demonstrated using a uh, zebrafish model. As you can see, we saw a significant improvement in the motor performance of these animals, as you can see here in the swimming pattern of uh, these animals and as, as also demonstrated in the graphs where we can see clearly the synergistic effect of each one of the compounds relative to uh, each one of them alone and of course to the standard of care that they're uh, rilazole. And this was also reinforced by looking at the uh, um, neurons. So we were looking on the, uh, on the, on the junction and then you can see we have the preclinical compounds uh, the presynaptic uh, compounds in red and the postsynaptic compounds in green. And when they are collocalized, main, meaning intact, we see yellow. When we treated these cells with prime, with these uh, animals with prime C, we gain more yellow, meaning more intact synapses and less often pre and post compounds. And lastly, we saw this uh, phenomena when we also looked on the neurons using MRI. So you can see the severe xenopathy 
in the ALS non-treated ones and the recovery following the treatment with Prime-C. Lastly, Prime-C new formulation was uh, shown to have synergistic uh, 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 concentration peak of both components relative to each one of the compounds alone, as you can see here in the PICI uh, study we performed with healthy volunteers. This critical development aimed to maximize the synergy between these two compounds, and it's important to, uh, to address that in the future. So in our phase 2A open-label study, uh, we followed 15 patients over 12 months of dosing. The patient came to the clinic every three months, and we assessed their safety to availability together with clinical outcomes such as uh, ALS-FRS and um, uh, respiratory function, and we also measured biomarkers. Results from this study show that Prime-C was found to be well tolerated with no drug-related SAEs. We saw a reduced functional and respiratory deterioration and significant changes in ALS-related biomarkers such as TDP43 and prostaglandin 2. As said, this was an open label study and therefore the placebo control group was obtained via propensity matching using the PROC database. When we are looking on patient treated with Prime-C, we see that the um, uh, effect on the forced vital capacity, for example, was attenuated in 30% relative to the controls and in 18% effect on the uh, functional rating scale on the ALSFRS are in patient treated with Prime-C relative to the control. Next, we wanted to assess uh, the, uh, the biomarkers cassette, and for that, we concluded a three-stage study in collaboration with Mass General Hospital, and we had the privilege to work also with James and Sabrina on that. So uh, in this three-stage study, uh, we characterize a cassette of biomarkers that relates to Prime C mode of action, and we use neuronal derived exosomes in order to explore that in plasma uh, extracted from the patients. So, in the first stage, we had cross sectional study, in, uh, which aimed to establish and characterize the basic phenomena in these suggested biomarkers, just to see what's the difference between healthy and ALS. Later on in the uh, second stage, we wanted to see the natural course of each one of the biomarkers in a longitudinal, non treated samples. And lastly, we wanted to see and assess the effect of prime C combination in our phase 2A study. As you can see, when we are looking on the demographic of, of all of the study, we see that they were matched as possible to each other with a similar uh, sample size. When looking on the results, you can see when we are measuring TDP43, we saw elevated levels in a less relative to healthy controls, a significant elevation that was reduced following the treatment with Prime C. So we see a significant reduction. And next, we wanted to see what happening to the recycling process. We know that in uh, neurodegenerative diseases and especially also in ALS, we see an impairment in recycling process. So uh, we just picked uh, two of mm -hmm. them, LC3 to represent uh, autophagy and catepsin D to represent lysosomal trafficking. And what we see here is very interesting. So basically we see a reduction uh, uh, in ALS patients relative to control. And looking on the longitudinal non-treated samples, we see that the low levels of LC3 actually keeps going down with the progression of the disease, which make the attenuation, the trend in the attenuation following the treatment with Prime-C very interesting. Next, we measured and, and assessed the effect on uh, neuroinflammatory uh, uh, markers. So we measure levels of uh, prostaglandin 2, NRF, and PPAR gamma. So as you can see, we saw a trend in PPAR with prostaglandin 2, but we know based on literature and additional studies that we performed that indeed the level are higher in ALS relative to healthy controls. And we were happy to see a significant reduction in prostaglandin 2 following 12 months of dosing in Prime-C uh, clinical study. We didn't see any effect on the other biomarkers. And that led us to conclude that maybe Prime-C affects the ALS pathology actually in two folds. Maybe we have a direct effect on the neuroinflammation and neuroinflammatory processes and an indirect effect on 
the recycling process in the cells. So as I said, we have lower levels of this LC3 catepsin D showing some kind of a uh, impairment in the recycling process in parallel to the elevated levels that we see in TDP43. And when we treated the uh, these um, uh, patients, we saw elevated levels of, of these markers together with the reduction in TDP43. So that's uh, our hypothesis to how we think that prime C and they work. And of course, we continue on working on that uh, and elucidating this mode of action. So these promising uh, results and very interesting results that we got from these biomarkers actually led us to our current study, Paradigm, which is a, a phase 2B, a randomized prospective double-blind study uh, with ALS patients. So we have 69 patients enrolled to the study in a ratio of 2 to 1. We here using the new formulation, the extended release formulation that I was speaking about. Uh, it's a six months of double blind followed by 12 months of open label extension. Uh, and the study take place in uh, Canada, Israel, and Italy. So we have uh, TDP43 and prostaglandin 2, the biomarkers as primary efficacy uh, biomarkers. And secondary efficacy, we have the clinical outcomes so obviously ALS FRS and uh, uh, slow vital capacity and of course survival. And we are also looking on safety and tolerability. So in terms of the inclusion criteria, they are pretty standard. We have patients, male and females between 18 and 75. Uh, we uh, see that they can be either a familiar or sporadic ALS uh, patient. They can be on rilazole or aderivone or um, a relivio combination or each one of the compounds uh, alone. In terms of the, oh, sorry, in terms of the inclusion criteria, they are all uh, indicated by um, each one of the compounds uh, label. And I think that this is the, so one of the advantages of, of uh, using non compounds. Um, so, oh, sorry. So this study is uh, quite pioneering in a sense that it's really puts uh, uh, biomarkers in the center. So we have um, a very versified and uh, a rich cassette of biomarkers underlying a uh, paradigm going from uh, microRNA profiling and proteomics, of course, looking on neurofilaments and even colometric measurements. And we see that as very high importance because we really believe that using this wide cassette of biomarkers will allow us to learn better and understand better prime C mode of action and its ability to affect the patients. So currently in these days, um, what we are doing is basically we are establishing and, and assessing uh, each one of these uh, cassettes, having a, a pilot study in order to optimize and assess each one of, of the assays and one of them is the uh, collaboration that we have with Neuralite using colometric uh, measurements in order to assess uh, uh, ALS in, 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 uh, in the lab. So um, in this study, we have 32 ALS patients from our IL, from Israel uh, site. Uh, in the baseline study, we had the, the baseline uh, data of the patient compared to healthy controls by looking on different uh, tasks presented on screen using virtual stimulus. So just as an example of one of them, if you can see here in the uh, gray square, we have the red dot uh, representing the stimulus and the blue uh, dot represent the right and left eye. And as the stimulus goes to another direction, we uh, see the eyes move with it and the time that takes from the stimulus to move to the eyes, basically the blue dots to move to it called latency uh, to react. And this work, uh, this baseline work was recently uh, published and showed a significant moderate correlation that was found in ALSFRS uh, R, which showed to be correlative to saccadic latency and based on this baseline study, uh, we are now pla planning on assessing the effect, the longitudinal effect uh, of um, uh, these um, uh, parameters on uh, our patient from, from the IL site. So, um, oh, 
sorry. I lost myself, just a second. All right. Um, so as we are uh, uh, heading the end of 2023, uh, we have all of our patients concluded the double blind segment and we also had a very successful uh, type D meeting with the FDA, uh, 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 actually uh, uh, reinforcing our CMC uh, strategy. We now have 96% of the patient who continued into the open label uh, extension uh, 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 segment in which all of the patients receive uh, prime C treatment. And we really look forward to sharing the clinical data with you soon. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank all of the trial participants, along with their families and caregivers, for participating in the study. To Nurse and amazing team, and our collaborators, and of course our scientific advisory board, for their devoted uh, uh, and great advice and support. Uh, during these difficult times in Israel, and also for the Jewish community all around the world, we feel that it's critical to remain resilient and continue to do our best to bring forward therapies for people suffering from ALS. So we look forward to sharing the upcoming results and bring hope, real hope to the ALS community and of course pride to our country. And lastly, I would like to thank all of you for listening and staying until now. So now you can go and enjoy your lunch break. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. I, I think we have time for a couple of questions. There are a few in, in the chat. Um, thank you for a presentation of a really comprehensive approach to trying to sort out particularly the biomarkers. There's a lot happening there. Um, we have a question uh, that the IPSC data suggests that there's a therapeutic effect that's uh, independent of any impact on animal or patient microbiome. Is um, are you doing any work to assess the effects on the microbiome of Prime C? Well, that's a question that I have to say we always get uh, mm -hmm. in that kind of in this kind of uh, conferences. So uh, we are currently doing a, a, a bigger study actually, and and in in one of the parameters there is also to look at microbiome. Yeah, but I have to say that we have the phase two A study. Uh, conducted 12 months of dosing and pay all patients from the, the, the this study continued to pr take Prime C even after the study and we didn't see any uh, uh, um, side effect in that terms as also now in, in the phase 3 study. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, another question in regards to, to the TDP43 um, biomarker data. Um, how are you measuring the TDP43? Are you focusing on any specific isoforms? Uh, um, and are you enrich, Are you normalizing for the number of exosomes captured, et cetera, those types of things? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Uh, so first of all, we are um, measuring TDP43 using neuron-derived exosomes. So uh, 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 we differentiate exosomes uh, 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 from uh, that comes from as, as much as possible from uh, the neurons. Currently, we are just uh, measuring the, le the levels using um, uh, ELISA, so no specific isoforms. Thank you. But we uh, are we we are on it. We we keep working on that. So hopefully, soon we will have even more specific answers. Thank you. And um, this is obviously it's not a marketed treatment yet. But there is a question about. Um, the cost of the therapy. Do you have a sense of, I guess, the affordability of this therapeutic based on the fact that they're, they're two um, existing molecules? So since it's currently under development uh, and Prime C is not commercialized yet, and we don't know the extent of efficacy that we will see from, from, from these clinical studies, I think that it's quite premature to say. As said, we, we do, put a lot of effort in showing the synergistic effect and what we are doing here. So it's not just taking these two compounds at all. Thank you very much.
And with that, I think we're um, going to close for a lunch break.